When you think of Japanese fashion, kimono might be the first thing that pops into your head. But have you ever wondered why they're so expensive and what goes into making them? I didn't know much about the art myself until I had the opportunity to make a kimono and I want to share this incredible experience with you. First, let's talk about the background of kimono. The word kimono is made up of two kanji, wear and things, which literally means clothes. It's now the national outfit of Japan, but it has Chinese origins. During the Kofun period, there was a lot of immigration between China and Japan, and Chinese style clothing became extremely popular in Japan. A few centuries later in the Heian period, Japan stopped sending convoys to China, and this stopped all the imports into Japan from China. So kimono became more valuable, and only the upper class people could afford it. During this time, Japan started putting its own spin on the Chinese outfit, and it became what we know as kimono today. Japanese economy flourished in the Edo period and townsfolk were finally able to buy their extravagant kimonos. The feudal military government at the time wasn't happy about it because they wanted to separate the middle class from the upper class, so they put a ban on using bright colors like gold and fine patterns on the townsfolk's kimono. Because of that, there's a new aesthetic of kimono called iki, which is more sophisticated and simple. These days, the kimono is worn only at special occasions and is usually quite expensive. You can find simple cotton kimono for less than maybe around 50 USD, but the original silk and handwoven kimono will cost hundreds of dollars, and these are for the less elaborate ones. The most extravagant multi-laid ones can cost up to $100,000. If you're curious to find out more about the different types of kimono, there are a lot by the way, we made these Instagram posts that you can just swipe through, including the most common kimono styles and the different parts of the kimono. You can check out Instagram or our blog post, which I'll link in the description box down below. Now I want to tell you about my experience with kimono in Kumejima. I didn't know much about kimono or the process they're made, and quite frankly, I used to think that they were completely overpriced and just tourist traps. But then my mindset completely shifted after I joined the kimono making experience in Kumejima, which is an island in Okinawa. We went to the kimono factory and there were around 10 women, all around the age of 60 working there, and they were all so sweet. They showed us a video summarizing the local kimono making process. This video was what blew my mind and changed my mindset about kimono. And I want to tell you a little bit about it. The particular style of kimono that they were making is called Kumejima Zumugi, which is a technique of dyeing silk fabric passed out through generations. This technique was declared a national intangible cultural property. So what is Kumejima Zumugi? They have to qualify these requirements. Number one, the thread must be drawn. Number two, the process must use only natural dyes. Number three, the thread must be hand tied. And number four, threads must be hand woven. I know you might be confused right now, but let me explain a little bit more. The whole process is long and complicated, but here's a brief overview that will give you a good idea of how kimono is made. Okay, first of all, silkworms are carefully raised from day one so they can create good threads. The temperature, humidity, and ventilation of the silkworm's breathing environment is monitored daily. They are fed nutritious foods made from mulberry, which is the silkworm's favorite. When the silkworm are ready to spin silk, the farmers place every individual silkworm into a frame of their own in a silkworm house. There, the silkworms begin spinning silk, and once their silk cocoons are made, they're placed into boiling hot water. The strands of the raw silk are formed this way, and with a wooden spindle, they're manually taken. The silk threads are then removed from the water and dried in the sun. Once they're dried, the silk is hand-spun around a wooden or plastic tube. Once the silk is ready, the dyeing process starts. One of the most interesting things I learned is that the silk is only dyed with natural ingredients like vegetable roots. This is done over the course of weeks and sometimes months. It's a repetitive, complicated, and time-consuming process. The kimono master designs a pattern for the kimono. When it's done, the master marks the pattern and design on the thread with paint. That's right, the kimono master measures the silk thread according to the size of the kimono and draws and marks on the thread as she goes. For example, if the kimono has a pattern of a bird in black, the master will measure each line of the pattern and draw the black markings on each individual thread. This process alone can take weeks to complete and for some kimonos with more complicated patterns, it could take months and even years. Once the pattern is created, the threads are spun back into the tube and the weaving process begins. Initially, I thought that kimono is made by printing the design on the kimono or stamping the pattern onto the kimono, but I had no idea that it's all handmade. The silk threads are hand spun, hand woven, and every single thread is marked by hand to create the pattern, which to me is absolutely incredible. 
I experienced weaving myself and honestly after just half an hour of weaving these silk threads my lower back was sore from bending over and my fingers were hurting from the friction. I had woven a small roughly 10 times 10 centimeters piece of cloth and the pattern I chose had a bird along with some lines which was designed by the local kimono masters. It's incredible how accurately they measure the cloth and how well the markings line up together to create this pattern. I couldn't afford to buy the kimonos since they were way out of my price range but I bought some homemade bookmarks that were made from the scrap materials of the kimono. I now have so much more appreciation and gratitude for these hardworking kimono masters who pay such crazy amount of attention to perfect this art form. Did you learn something new about kimono today? If you're interested in checking out these kind of kimono experiences for yourself, let us know in the comment section down below. We have more videos about Japanese culture and all about Japan coming up, so make sure to subscribe and press the bell notification. See you next week.